Hey there, welcome to my weekly Yubi Chef uh, cook along. So I'm going to get cooking in a second and show you the 10 dishes that I've done for this week's menu. Uh, we've got a carpaccio and monkfish coming up with mermaid gin dressing, local sea herbs, caviar. Uh, we've got a gazpacho, beetroot, local olive white tomatoes, lots happening. Just a little quick one about next week's menu. Um, loads happening here, brown apple sourdough to start with, day boat lemon sole, grilled sardines, dark and stormy on the dessert, another really lovely menu. Don't forget, it comes to you all prepared, ready to go. No chopping, no peeling, great fun. And now that things are opening back up again, of course you can invite friends around in the garden and pass this Yubi Chef meal off as if you've made it from start to finish. That's the, that's the great fun about this. So give Yubi Chef a go, it's great fun. Promise you'll really love it. It's a restaurant meal in your own home. Let's get cooking. First up is our weekly bake. This week I've done a Cordell Olive Focaccia. So it comes to you all in the foil parcel, so it's ready to go in the oven, it's not going to dry out. So let's get in that in there, 12 to 14 minutes. When we come to serve it, I've got some little toasted spelt here in my dish, little pot ready for my um, rated oil jam. Um, so take a spoon, give it a little stir, um, and what we've done for you, we've infused the basil oil, and then whipped it up with that rapeseed oil, so you end up with this really unctuous kind of like, rapeseed paste which is really nice to dip all of that for capturing so let's get that all scraped out and you want to do this before you serve it because then the rapeseed oil jam will kind of soften down and then it's like absolutely wonderful to dip into the focaccia so give that a little clean up and then that's all ready to go and then we'll be back to open up that focaccia and serve up so I'm just going to get my focaccia out of the oven now Really, really simple. Be careful of obviously that hot tray. Then unwrap it. Now you can use rake oil or uh, olive oil, completely up to you. Look at that. Really, really nice. Don't let that olive escape there. Get that back on. So you, you can see there we've got Gordel olives on the top, little rosemary, sea salt. But you want to get a little bit more oil back on there, where that's baked. And the oil kind of like is sucked into the bread. So be really, really generous with that. And also, tiny bit more salt up to you. I like a nice bit of little salt in there. And then give it a trim up. And then I'm gonna get that just into four beautiful cubes, like so. Put those olives back on, we don't wanna waste those. And I'm just gonna display that, look at that. Right next to my rapeseed oil jam and that is all ready to go. All ready to just dip into that jam. It's unctuous, it's absolutely delicious. Hope you enjoy the weekly bake. First starter for you is this uh, carpaccio of monkfish. This is cured monkfish, and what I've done, just send it to you like this. So if you have a look at this here, it's between these sheets of paper, so really, really easy. And look, just peel that back there, and you can see that monkfish in there. Lovely like, little oil kind of um, colours coming off of it. So just peel off your layer carefully on, from the monkfish. And this has been cured in uh, juniper, a little bit of sea herbs and mermaid gin. So in here we've got our mermaid gin dressing from the Isle of Wight of course. And then in here, these little palmiers. So this is um, seaweed uh, in there and a little bit of lemon. They're gonna go in the oven. Just a minute in there, not too long. Then let's take our plate, take a little bit of dressing first of all, just dress my sea herbs. So you can see they, these are, this is rock samphire grass. I was down on the cliffs down at Bentner this morning picking this. Really, really lovely. It's a little bit more harsh than uh, marsh samphire grass, but it's absolutely delicious, pretty fragrant. So, a little bit of dressing on there. Then let's take our carpaccio and then just carefully put that right into the center of your plate. Give it a little push down just so it adheres to the plate and then just carefully peel that paper off the top. So take your time with this and you end up with that lovely monkfish carpaccio. There we go. So, move that out of the way. Then what we're gonna do at that stage is take a little bit of that gin dressing. I'm just going to spoon a touch just on the top, not too much. Just use the back of a spoon. Like so, and this is 
going to nicely glaze all of that monkfish up and dress it so you've got all those flavours all working together. There we go. As I say, I like a little bit mold and salt on there. Just a tiny little flakes, not too much where it's been cured. And what we'll do, take some of our sea herbs. So I'm just going to take a few of those, arrange those around. See that lovely green on that? Lovely opaque colour of the fish. So there you go, a few more of those. And then we'll start going, of course, with our creme fraiche and caviar. So next up, creme fraiche. This has just been whipped with a touch of lemon juice. It's all it needs, nice and simple. So give that a stir just to make sure it's all nice and smooth. And then take it about five or so nice little piles of the creme fraiche. And this just adds that little richness. It's still got that acidity. But just where it goes all up, that fish and the caviar and the sea earth just blends perfectly. So five little piles of the cream, like so. Quick rinse of my fingers. And then let's come back and then we're going to add our caviar. So this is actually herring roe. But again, the flavour with this, really, really nice. So add little piles of that. Row. I like to put it on top of the cream, just where you get that contrast of colour of the black and white. There you go. So let's move those out of the way. Touch more dressing. This time I'm just almost spooning it in little clumps just in between. There you go, it's looking lovely and clean, perfect this time of year. Quick little clean up of a the plate, then let's get our palmios out. So out we come. Again, I'm just going to dress some light, little bit of oil, just to give them a nice little shine. And where we've done our piles of creme fraiche, I'm just going to sort of stand them up next to it. Oh, pretty. There you go. And all that's left after that, I'm going to get a few more bits of sea herbs. Just on the top of there. Make it full. So, there we go. And that's it. I'm happy with that. So, it's a lovely little delicate start to a few cured monkfish, caviar, creme fraiche, sea herbs, and those lovely little palmiers. Next up, I've got oxtail carbonara for you. This is absolutely banging on taste. So here we've got, this is our truffle linguine. So this is our fresh pasta that we've made. Truffle going through there. It's got a touch of butter in there. Now what you want to do, to heat this up, you want for every portion of pasta, you need two tablespoons of water going in there, and then all it's gonna do is go onto the heat, and then we're just gonna to toss it over a little bit, just gonna heat the pasta up, that's it, ready to go. Here, this is my oxtail, so this is the oxtail meat, all picked down off the bone, and then I've reduced the sauce, made it lovely and sticky, red wine, thyme in there. This is gonna go into the water, as it is, for about six to eight minutes. Just scalding water, that's gonna heat it up, the sauce is gonna be lovely and sticky. Then garnishes, I've got a, a little thyme and uh, bacon butter here, and then also we've got a uh, bacon cream uh, with a little bit of bacon lard in it as well, some aged parmesan, and then here we've sent you with some lovely summer truffles. You see there's beautiful little slices in there, nice and thin. See that? Lovely. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna get my bacon cream on there, get my butter on, my pasta is going to go on once my oxtail is all ready to go. So we'll be back shortly and I'll show you how to put this together. Okay, so I've almost ready now to serve up my little carbonara. So there's my bacon butter. There you see with a little dice of bacon in. Then we've got that garlic and thyme cream in there. Let's get my bowl over. And a nice hot bowl ready to serve. Back on that pasta. Before you serve it, a little touch of seasoning. 
I'm going to put a little bit of that aged parmesan in there as well, just a tiny bit. Just toss that over. There we go, beautiful. So, let's grab our oxtail up. There we go. All we need to do is dip it out nice and carefully because it's very hot now. And then I'm just going to slice through and then pour out that beautiful oxtail meat. You can see straight away how sticky that is. Let's get a spoon there. So be careful, you don't want to break it up. But look at all those lovely muscles of the oxtail meat. That's what you want to, you want to keep them together like that. So you've got nice, like, nice pieces. So let's get our pasta. I'm just going to lift it up. I'm, I'm not going to put it on a pasta fork because I want it nice and spread out over my dish. So let's spread that out nice and evenly. First of all, then we're going to get some of those lovely little pieces of oxtail. Just sit them on the top. You see they're all naturally glazed in that beautiful sticky oxtail sauce. I wish you could smell this as this was, this is playing up. If you've ordered this this week, tasty, tasty dish coming your way. So all those lovely pieces of oxtail. Just on the top like that. And we're gonna put a little bit more sauce. Remember, we've got our two other sauces going on there as well. So, they're all good to go. Then, a little clean down. I'm gonna go with my little bits of smoked bacon in there. Get those nicely spread over. And then some of that butter. It's like a clarified butter there, flavored with the smoked bacon. You can see the flavors building there. And then we're going to get some of our thyme cream. And I'm just going to pour some of that in between the pasta. That's almost like now tying it all together as that carbonara flavour we all know and love. There we go. Then finally, let's get some of our parmesan. Go and shut on the top. This is a beautiful aged parmesan from the fromagerie. Really lovely. Finally, take your little cotton bud off of that truffle and then just get those out onto your board. I'm just gonna put a little bit of fresh truffle slice. Slice it on top. There we go. Look at that. Honestly, this is smelling oh, absolutely beautiful. Hope you enjoy this one. My last starter this week, vegetarian starter that is, is this beautiful gazpacho. This is made with Isle of White tomatoes and roasted beetroot in here. So we've got sherry vinegar in there, we've got basil, basil we've got local tomatoes, really, really smooth, and then we emulsify it with a touch of rapeseed oil in there, so it's lovely and smooth. Then here, you see we've got these cigarettes, so this is made with a foil brick pastry, and in the inside here, this is Jewish relish. So this is a recipe I learned when I was working for Jermaine Schwab up at Wintering and Fields. This is uh, beetroot, it's horseradish, all inside, really, really beautiful. They're going to go in the oven about six to eight minutes. Main thing is until they're crispy. Then I've got some tomatoes, a mixture of tomatoes here. Uh, these have just been dried slowly, just in a dehydrator to really intensify the flavour. And then I've got a little horseradish cream uh, just to go on the top. So what we're going to do, have a little pan of water just on here, and that's ready to little take a little spoon of our uh, of our cream onto the dish. And then we'll be back with a second plate up once our cigarettes are nice and crispy. So, just grabbing out my bowl. So, gazpacho needs to be nice and cold. So, there's my frozen bowl ready to serve with it. So, what I'm going to do carefully cut open your gazpacho. So, be careful. I've got a white apron on, but be careful if you um, whatever clothes you're wearing because if it splashes, it can stain. And then, just pour that. See, look at that beautiful, smooth, velvety gazpacho. Just going to pour that in. There we go. And I'm going to grab out my little cigarettes. They're all nice and crispy. Just give them a look. Yep, yeah, lovely. Let's put those out on the board. Tiny little season on them. There you go, lovely. Then what we'll do, put our cigarettes. I'm just going to start to balance them just on the bowl like so. And then we'll take another one. 
that can just sit on the side. There we go. And then another just around there. So then what we do is get some of those lovely little tomatoes. And just sit them in the top. Sit the little couple just on the side. There we go. Play with the colours so you can see always all what's going on. We've got some little, little tiger ones there. There we go. And then hot spoon then. Just dips in the water. Go into your cream. Then you can put it either on the cigarettes or just sit it nicely in your spatula like so. And there you go. Really lovely to start the meal off. Nice and tangy. Uh, great way to get the appetite and the taste buds going. So that's my beetroot gazpacho with local tomatoes and the cigarettes of Jewish relish. Next up on the UB Chef menu this week, fish course. Now we've got Thai mussels for you. So in here, I've got a lovely little parcel on papillot of the mussels. This is gonna go in the oven about 10 to 12 minutes. It's got some stock in there, so it's gonna steam lovely. That's all in there. Then we've made this seeded sourdough for you so you can mop up all of the lovely sauce from the mussels. That's gonna go in the oven for about four to five minutes just to warm it up. So we'll leave it on the side. Sauce, in here we've got coconut milk, we've got fish sauce, uh, we've got ginger in there, kaffir lime leaves, coriander, a um, little bit of lemongrass as well. So this sauce, we're just gonna heat it up. So when our mussels come out, we're gonna pour this sauce over the top of them as we plate it. So that can just go on the edge of the stove now. And then my last part of it is a lovely little Thai salad just on the side. So empty all your ingredients of your Thai salad just into your bowl, like so. See in here we've got some chili, red onion, a little bit of corn, pak choy, and then I've got this Thai dressing. Pour your Thai dressing over. Give it a good stir, or a little toss with some sort of salad tongs. Make sure it's all coated. Doesn't need any more salt because everything is in there. Look at that, you've got a beautiful colour there. And I'm just going to leave that, just sat now for that dressing to work on all of those vegetables, which will wilt them down slightly, release all the little uh, juice from the pak choy, etc. We'll leave it on the side and we'll be back in 10 or so minutes to show you how to plate up our Thai mussels. Mussels are nearly ready to come out now, so I'm just going to get my little Thai salad and I'm going to just dress this up just nice and simply on my serving plate. Get all that corn on there. This is just as a lovely little fresh like side dish to go alongside. Of course that sauce has got a little bit of heat to it. It's quite rich with that coconut milk in there. So we want this beautiful salad just to cut it all so that's all going on. Lovely. Get that last bit of that dressing. Just plate that on there. And then it'll be time to get our muscles out so that's all ready to go a little bit of more wipe on the plate with that presentation really important so let's get our muscles out here we go really careful of these I've got my sauce which is just finished off heating up so get a little knife or scissors just open that up Whoa. lovely Amazing smell, never, never tire of that smell of mussels. I'm going to get my bread out of the oven as well. Right, I'll see this sourdough. And then that sauce is all ready there. So I'll bring that over. Then all that's left to do, let's get a nice big spoon. Let's start getting our mussels into our bowl. Uh, load them in there. Of course, we're giving you a lovely, lovely big portion of these. Give them a little arrange, especially those top ones, so that you can see all the beautiful orange meat in there. This is Fowey mussels, this one. They are absolutely stunning, really, really nice. Again, wish you could smell via this video. So, on we go. Last few in there. I've arranged them all nice. Right, then the sauce. So, give it a nice little stir. You've got kaffir lime in here. 
We've got shallots. And this is your chance just to make sure all of those shells, of course, get a nice little bit of that dressing as you go. And of course, the garnish. So, lime leaf, the smell coming off. James, you like the smell coming off of here? <laughs> there we go. Last bit of sauce on the top. And then the bread, you just want it on the side. So let's just get that. Sit it just in there. There we go. Look at that. So that's our Thai mussels. At first with the Yubi Chef at home menu. Lovely little Thai salad on the side. Of course that seeded salad to dip into all that juices at the end. Hope you enjoy it. Onto our main course of meat now. So we've got a tenderloin of pork. This has been wrapped in a little bit of serrano ham and sage in between there as well. We brine the pork and it's been sous vide as well. So this is going to go in the oven for about 10 minutes. Now if you don't like the pork pink, we like to sell that to serve the fillet of pork tenderloin pink. If you don't like it, put it in for an extra five or six minutes. So that's going to go in now. Also at the same time our pomana. So this is layered up potato, beautiful thin layers of potato with clarified butter in there. That's going to go in as well, same time as the pork. Garnishes uh, for this one this week are a little charred uh, white onion just in here. So this has been confit. Uh, and then we've got some baby carrots as well. Bearing a little emulsion. They're simple, just straight into the water. Scalding water, which I'm just going to leave on the side. It'll be in there six minutes. That's all we need to do. And then that leaves us the rest of the garnishes. A lovely pork sauce just here, which is just going to get warmed up. Lovely bit of white onion puree or sabis uh, just in here. And then these beautiful little sage tempuras. Um, they're going to get warmed up in the oven a minute or so. So we're back shortly and I'll show you how to put all the pork to a uh, tenderloin main course together. Okay, I'm all ready to serve up my pork now. So that's my onion puree there and my pork sauce. I've got a plate ready to go. Then let's get our pork out first so we want that to rest. So there's our pork there. It's a lovely little tenderloin wrapped in the serrano pan. And then we've got our pomana. And so I've just heated up my sage tempura just to give it a lovely little crisp. And what we need to do is just get out your vegetables. So this is our onion and carrot that have just been sitting in that scalding water. And all you need to do is just slice open the bag carefully into a pan. You see straight away that lovely emulsion bubbling away there. You see how it glazes up as well. Just agitate the pan a little bit and that will really glaze up those carrots, make them nice and shiny. And then we're going to cut our onion as well. That's going to go into the pan. And then just get a little spoon. Get some of that emulsion. You see, you just glaze up the onion. That's all ready. So, couldn't be simpler, could it? A little bit of mold and salt, just on the top. All ready to go. So, first of all, let's take our onion puree just here. I'm gonna give it a nice little stir. Just take a nice little spoon of it. There we go. Then we're going to get our pomana. I'm just going to use a little pallet knife to get this one out. So carefully lift that out onto your board, make sure it's all nice and lined up. And then we'll put a little bit of pomana just there. There we go. Then we'll get our onion. So this has just been confit and then charred nicely on the top. So a lovely little bit of barbecue flavour there. Then your pork, up to you. I'm just going to slice off just the end. So very little thin slice coming off. I'm not gonna, not gonna add any salt to this because where you've got that serrano ham, it's quite salty already. So a little bit of pork just on there. Find a little shake of our carrots and then let's start to finish this off. So a bit of carrot on there. Another one just poking out the center. Touch of sage. So obviously this pork isn't going to go to waste. You feed that to the cat or the dog. I'm sure they'll love it. Then a bit of sage. 
and then that finishes off just with the sauce. So I'm gonna put a tiny little bit on top of that pork, but not on the sage, and then let's just get a bit around. All our sauce is all made start to finish. Lovely roasted bones, pork bones brought down, touch of red wine in there, great flavour. And that's it, that's my tenderloin of pork. Beautiful with that sage, just in between the skin and the, um, the serrano ham. Confit onion, little baby carrots, a lovely pomana and that white onion puree. Lovely little main course, hope you enjoy. My vegetarian main course on Ubi Chef this week is a foite uh, of spring vegetables. So in here, this is on Papillot again, a little bit of a theme going in this week's menu. This is a local asparagus in here, we've got baby carrots, a little bit of tender stem broccoli, uh, we've got some peas in there, a little bit of edamame beans and a bit of stock as well. That's going to go in the oven for about 10-12 minutes. In that goes. And the rest of the garnishes, beautiful little asparagus beurre blanc here. So that vinaigrinus, asparagus puree going through there as well. That's going to get gently warmed, just last minute though, not, uh, you don't need to cook that for long. And then my little pastry case here, so it's a puff pastry, just take the little lid off. And then in here you've got a persillard of little mushrooms. So we've got oyster mushrooms in there with lovely shallots, garlic, parsley to finish it off with. So all we want to do is get all of your filling inside your pastry case. You want to get lots in there as well. There we go. So beautiful selection of mushrooms with those shallots and garlic and parsley in there, like so. And then what we're going to do with this, this is going to go in the oven for about six minutes. It doesn't need any longer. Keep a little lid just off the side. Just put that in for one minute at the end. Um, and then that's going to warm the mushrooms through nicely. So we'll just wait for our uh, vegetables to be in a little bit of time before we put that in. And then all we're going to serve it with is some sliced truffle again, summer truffle, another little theme on this week. It's because it's so good. So we'll be back in about eight or so minutes and I'll put the foie together. So just ready to serve my asparagus foie now. So that's a little warm plate. Then we've got our asparagus beurre blanc there. A little bit of truffle ready to go. So let's get our foie out. There we go, lovely and glazed, quite beautiful mushrooms. And then our parcel of vegetables. Be careful, of course, it's pretty hot. And we'll just open up that foil. Just cut in there. There we go, pull all that open. And you can see, got a lovely little selection of vegetables in, in there. So let's lift our foite off. Then what we want to do first of all is build some of these vegetables up actually on, on the board before we put it on. I'll just make it a little bit easier to present. So just plate them all nice, get some of that nice asparagus spear, the broccoli, just to make it all a lovely bit of height. Some, I mean, give me carrots in there, all peeled. None of this business unpeeled carrots. A bit more. And we'll go back, a bit more asparagus spear now. Touch of broccoli. I'm gonna get a few of those edamame beans and peas. See that's why I play it up on the board so that you're not ruining your presentation of your plate. There you go, lovely. A few more beans just on the top for good measure. And I'm gonna just get my little truffle, take a little cotton wool off and then get that onto my board. Get the truffle, garnish it all nicely over. There you go. And finally, Tiny bit of mould and salt, just on there. Then what we'll do, we'll get some of our asparagus beurre blanc. Just gonna garnish that on the plate again. Quite a light, nice bit of it. And a tiny bit actually on the top I like to put. Then a little lid, just look at that. It sits on top. 
on it goes. Make sure that shuffle's all fully on show, a little tidy up, and there you have it. That's my main course vegetarian for this week. Asparagus, mushroom foite, with that asparagus bear blanc. On to desserts now, and we've got a pina colada. We've done this one before, but in here, very, very carefully take this out. It needs to be out at least 15, 20 minutes. If you can spare longer, have it out in the fridge, an hour or so at least before you're gonna serve it, and that will make the, lovely, the parfait lovely and soft. In there, you've got a pina colada centre to it, then you've got a coconut parfait, and then you've got this lovely little toasted desiccated coconut on the outside. What we're serving with it, crispy coconut, just here. Then I've got a little rum syrup, lovely dark rum in there, uh, with some pineapple and also a little bit of pomegranate seeds in there as well. So just take a knife, I'll send you this little pineapple carpaccio, so cut off the outside, and then you'll see it's on a little couple of sheets of paper, so just carefully pull out your carpaccio until it's, these are seriously juicy pineapples. And then take off one layer of the paper, and then really carefully get your serving plate and just put it on the top, okay? And that's pineapple carpaccio all ready to go. Then what we'll do next, take our Pina colada, sit that on the top. Then we are going to get some of our syrup. This is a rum syrup. Just with a little bit of pomegranate seeds for a lovely little crunch. Of course that colour. And you've got some pineapple in there. Dark rum, pineapple juice. And just use the eye just to make it look really lovely. Around, touch more on the back, like so. Now we're going to get a little bit of that syrup. And just finish it off. So, next up, coconut. Put us where we like, but I think it's quite nice. Just carefully get a nice balance on that first one, and then obviously when you go to the table. We go nice and careful, but get a bit of height on it now with that coconut all balanced on the top. And that is it. That is my pina colada dessert. Lovely little boozy centre in there. I'm not going to lift this one up in case I drop it, but hope you enjoy it. Next dessert for you is a burnt honey panna cotta. Now we used to have this on the restaurant menu when we first opened. Always went down really, really well, so we brought it back for you chef. So in here you've got the panna cotta, then you've got honeycomb here, you've got some poached blackberries, a little bit of coriander cress, which you might think a bit strange, but it goes absolutely beautifully with it. So what we're gonna do, I've got my bowl all ready. Bring over a little pan of scalding water. Again, be careful when you're doing this. Of course, it's, you don't wanna get burnt. And then just, Get your panna cotta, and then nice and carefully, you just want to lower it into the water. Doesn't want to be in there for too long, but basically just, here it goes, once, up, down, that's it. Okay? Let it drip off, and then you see that, look, you see it? So it's just all come away from the side already. So just carefully turn it out, and turn it out away from your plate, so then you don't get any of these drips. Put it onto your other hand. And then into your bowl. So, little rinse. Pan of cotta as well, I should point out. Make sure it's out of the uh, fridge. About a quarter of an hour before you turn it out, and then you get a lovely little wobble on there. Beautiful. So, then we're going to get some of our blackberries. Just carefully place a few of those nicely around, a few on top. They're just in a little bit of creme de mure, so lovely little alcoholic touch to it as well. A few more, be quite generous, and then get some of that beautiful syrup as well. Okay, right. there we go. Happy with that. Then we want our honeycomb, so lovely pieces of honeycomb. I'm just gonna sit 
in there like so. You can snap a few pieces down if you want to make it a little bit smaller. I'm happy with that actually. A little, let's get a little, a little few shards just in there just for the eye. And then we'll go with our coriander. So this is just a coriander cress. So it's not as kind of like full on pokey as a actual normal coriander herb. You just get that lovely little flavor just as you tuck it into the panna cotta and all those berries. So nice few shoots. And it just looks beautiful, don't it? Lovely and dainty. And there we go. Save those ones for another day. And that is my burnt honey panna cotta, poached blackberries, a little bit of honeycomb and fresh coriander shoots. Onto my cheese course now. This is a Comte fondue. So you see there, I've got these lovely little dishes. In the bottom, the fondue, which is just set at the moment because it's chilled, of course. That's got the white wine going through there. It's got nutmeg, all the usual suspects of a fondue. But then on the top here, I've got this lovely little circle of potato, which has just been confit. That's going to go on a little dish in the oven about 15 to 20 minutes. Basically, if you can see the cheese just bubbling out the side uh, and that potato is nice and glazed on top, it's all ready to go. We're serving it with this little chutney, brownie apples, black onion seeds in there, salted crackers, so you can just dip into all of that molten cheese. And we're back in about 20 minutes, and I'll show you how to finish this one off. Cheese fondue time now. Here we go, look at this. Look at that. See how that's beautiful, look at that. That potato, lovely and crispy on the top. And that fondue underneath, molten hot. So what we're gonna do, just lift it over onto our board. Give it a couple of minutes before you serve it. Now just let the temperature calm down a bit. So I'm gonna take some of my chutney. So this is brownie apple. Nice and tart. It's got some of those black onion seeds going through. This goes really, really nice with that Comte. So plate that in there, like so. Then we're gonna get in preparation for our little fondue coming on. We're gonna put some of our salted crackers. I always use a little bendy fork or something like that just to display them. We could use a little bowl just with some risotto rice, for example just so they could all lean up against it. So that's all my crackers in there. And then just left, let's just very, very carefully sit our fondue in there. And of course, this is a great one to share. But there you go. So my suggestion is get a bit of the uh, brownie apple, put it on the top, get some crackers, get a knife in there and dunk away. That's my cheese course this week. Hope you enjoy it.